hello there today i thought i would do a bit of a chattier video than normal um and it's about kind of i suppose a difficult subject that i haven't really addressed or spoken about on this channel um but basically i am a incredibly anxious person and recently i've been thinking about how my reading relates to my anxiety um and i thought it would be perhaps interesting to some people here to hear that story um i suppose a lot of bookish people tend to be quite anxious um <clears throat> so hopefully this will be slightly interesting to some of you um so yeah as i say i'm an incredibly anxious person i always have been um ever since i was very young you know and people sort of pin it up to being shy when you're young um but it's kind of escalated i suppose the older i have got and actually strangely enough since i have started working from home my anxiety has really skyrocketed to the point where I have to actively force myself to go out of the house every day and I go for at least an hour walk every day just to kind of level myself. It's strange, you you can't expect anxiety to be something that's worse when you're going out to work and don't get me wrong, when I was going out to work every day my anxiety was incredibly high. Um, I, I used to describe it as to some people you know going to work every day isn't a big deal once you get used to the job but for me the feeling of going to work every day was like I suppose the feeling for somebody else of their first day of work or their first week of work it was that nerve nerve-wracking experience every single day but since working from home I've definitely noticed my anxiety worsening and I think there are a few different reasons for that I think when you're obviously left alone with your thoughts you have more time to sort of escalate and you you kind of lose rationality i think when you're not going out to work as much um which is why it's so important to go out for a day and i do notice it if i don't go out for a day i will really suffer the next day um and be a whole lot more anxious um also i think there's the anxiety about work itself so when you're working from home there's always this anxiety about am I going to still be able to get jobs? I mean, I'm, I'm lucky in the sense that I work in collaboration with another company, so they give me jobs. It's not a case of me having to go out and source jobs. So for the most part, my jobs are pretty steady, but then I worry that that company are going to suddenly not want to work with me anymore, and then I would be completely up the creek without a paddle, um, which is kind of... It's kind of justified, of course, because there's no contract, but also it's an anxiety that I know is kind of unreasonable because, for instance, the career I was in before, well, career, I mean, it wasn't really a career, I was working in a shop, um, but during my time there, for example, um, we went from having 15 um, manned checkouts to having only six manned checkouts and the rest were all self-scans. So, in that sense, that job was much more unclear, whereas the job I'm doing now is only growing in popularity as web presence and you know more and more companies are turning to things like blogs and you know so my job in that sense is more secure than my old job but because I don't have the comfort of a contract it, it sends my anxiety a little bit mad anyway I'm digressing um so I'm a very anxious person and I have tried different coping mechanisms um, throughout my life to deal with my anxiety, most of them admittedly unhealthy, um, some of them when I was a teenager incredibly unhealthy um, and also less harmful ones which are still not the best like eating certain comfort foods, um, eating to calm myself down, things like that. Um, but recently, probably since I was about 20, reading has definitely been my anxiety go-to. Um, I will read to calm myself down as a lot of people I'm sure do, as you probably do, um, but I've been thinking recently about whether that is a healthy thing or not and this was kind of, it's been on my head for a while and it's something that um, really came to the fore when I was watching a program on BBC One, it was um, with Nadia from the Bake Off, I don't know her surname, she's just Nadia from the Bake Off um, and it's called Nadia Anxiety and Me, um, it's on BBC iPlayer, I would really recommend watching it if you're at all interested in anxiety or experience it yourself um, and it was really fascinating because obviously a lot of sort of ways of coping with anxiety focus around coping mechanisms um, and, and you know yoga and calm breathing and um, all reading or whatever helps you to calm yourself down um, and the doctor we basically follow Nadia through these different therapy sessions and the doctor was talking about how actually coping mechanisms are often unhealthy um, and as an example he said to Nadia what do you do when you're having a panic attack um you know go through it talk me through the steps do them um, and obviously she was talking about you know calm breathing and as she was 
calmly breathing in and out, um, she started to have a panic attack. And he was like, that is exactly the problem. These coping mechanisms actually feed your anxiety, I suppose, for a few different reasons. Obviously your brain, when you do those coping mechanisms, your brain triggers and your brain starts panicking and thinking, I am anxious. Um, but also just that when you can't do those things or, you know, for example, a lot of anxious people, um, me included, have these very restringent routines that they like to stick to. And so when that routine isn't there or when something happens that you can't do that routine, that then sends you into an anxious spiral because you have built this routine to feed your anxiety. Um, and it, it, it kind of highlighted something that I've been thinking about for a while, that I don't know whether reading does help me to calm down. Um, and obviously it does um, on the surface level. And obviously the problem is the extent to which I use reading to calm myself down. I use it more as a addictive thing. Um, it's a thing that I can't do without and I think that's where the problem lies. So I have had multiple problems with this since I started using reading as a coping mechanism in my 20s um, where I literally can't not read. Um, if I go an evening without reading I go into a real panic and I feel really out of sorts and not myself um, to the point where I have had relationships break down because I have not been capable of putting a book down um, and you know if a partner ever was like oh well let's watch a film let's not read tonight I couldn't do it I could not I could not not read um, and also things like I would say no well also I, I I suppose I use reading sometimes as an excuse not to do things so if there is uh, the chance of going out with friends say I will be like no because I need to read this book specifically I need to read this book so that I can review it on booktube uh, but that's obviously not the best way to be doing things um so what has this made me conclude well Basically, the past few weeks I have been reading a lot less and doing a lot more things. I've been going out a little bit in the evenings and I have been just watching telly really and I, I don't really want to get into the habit of watching a lot of television. However, I've been binging New Girl and I loved it. Um, so I don't want to get into the habit of like watching a lot of television. That's not, you know, and I think that's just another thing that's kind of a distraction and a coping mechanism. Um, but I do want to get less in the habit of reading all the time. Um, for this channel, that probably means less books to review. Um, and I'm kind of happy with that. I think I'm, I'm still going to aim to read about six a month, which is still a lot by normal standards. Um, but I'm just not going to put that pressure on myself anymore because I think I definitely need to step away and look at the way that I use reading and the way that perhaps it's not the best. Um, I, I don't know if this has been helpful for anyone. It's just an idea that I've sort of been toying with for a while and I think it's probably something that a lot more people do than, than we realise. I don't know. Um, so let me know down below. If you, how you use reading. I'm obviously not saying that reading is an unhealthy thing. It's my favourite thing and I will always do it. Um, but I think it's interesting to look at things like these which do become habits. Reading is a habit um, and kind of look at what forms that habit and what is actually behind it. Anyway, anyway, I will see you next time. Bye!